Live from the Rob Christensen Radio Network Satellite Studio, it's Jim and Rob Overanalyze the Movies. Well, hello everybody and welcome to this special episode of Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, the live video podcast where we like to go above and beyond, to go beyond the review uh, and get into the story, the craft, the meaning of the films we watch today. And of course, today we do have a special film for you. We're going to be looking at the Canadian war film. And, you know, I know that's kind of rare. <laughs> uh, not a lot of them, but we're looking at the 2015 Canadian war film, Hyena Road. Uh, but before we do that, let's, uh, I think it's time to welcome my co-host with the most, the guy I'd want in the foxhole with me. Mr. Jim Chavoyko. How are you doing, sir? Great. Great. I uh, just finished work and I'm <laughs> my my eyes are all pre-strained and I'm ready to go. <laughs> and I'm sitting on a I'm sitting on a seat made out of lost poppies. So uh, it might be a little painful, but uh, every now and then there'll be a ah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think all I those lost lost. Mm -hmm. I lost four of them, at least uh, four of them this year, uh, but maybe five. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know what, uh, Jim, are you good? Other other than all the lost poppies, uh, yes. are you good? You, everyone uh, everyone in your, in your fam jam doing fine? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty quiet uh, quiet in the old household today. So uh, we just had the snow, uh, the, the, because uh, for those who don't know, uh, being in Winnipeg, uh, we got our first big snow of the year. So I literally, they just finished. So I was hoping for a little bit of atmospheric sound from the snow collectors, the uh, scrapers and everything else. They were making a huge racket about 10 minutes ago. And I, mm -hmm. think, they've, I think they've wrapped up anyway. So, uh, but yeah, no, everything's, uh, everything's good. How about you? I, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, Jim, in the grand scheme of things, I have much to be grateful for, little legitimate to complain about. Um, so, there you go. yeah. And on that note, uh, I think it's it's just about time to get to our movie. But before we do that, why don't we welcome, we've got a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks in the chat now. Um, some I won't be able to bring up until they chat again. Uh, but first, I did want to say, uh, Richard, Richard, and Katie, good to see you. Um, uh, two thirds of the uh, Belmoral Street Research Regulars, and uh, it's been a while since we've seen him. But uh, uh, well, not been a while; it hasn't been that long. What am I talking about? Anyway, weeks maybe, yeah. Vlad sixty five, uh, Walt from uh, BC, Walt from Walt's Flicks Picks. Um, <laughs> who uh, recently, and I can't wait to uh, go check out his channel if you haven't already, although he's got a much larger subscriber base than Jim and I do. Um, he recently did, uh, he did a, a, a bit of a dive on, um, oh my God, what is it? It's that the bomber one. Thank damn you. Busters. The one that I was bugging about like months ago. Anyway, uh, good to see you here. Who else do we got? We have, oh. A good day from a mate, from our mate down in Perth, Western Australia, the most isolated national capital on the planet. See, it's, I remember, I remember these things and, uh, yeah, I think that's who we've got joining us already. Now we, uh, I think now we need to move forward and I'll, uh, I'll let's, uh, let me let me bring up the film we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna chat we're gonna chat about, uh, and that is uh, as I said before, Hyena Road. It is a 2015 Canadian war film. Uh, it's here's the from IMDb. Three different men, three different worlds, three different wars all stand at the intersection of modern warfare, a murky world of fluid morality where all is not as it seems. Ooh. Uh, it, uh, it was directed, it stars, uh, was directed and also uh, written by Paul Gross. He wrote it with Neve uh, Fishman. It stars Paul Gross, 
Rossif Sutherland and Christine Horn. It's got a pretty deep uh, uh, supporting cast, uh, including Alan Hocko, David Richmond Peck, Jen- uh, Jennifer Pudovic, uh, Akulu uh, Mikis, and uh, Akalu Mikis, my apologies, uh, Niamat Argandabi, Nabil Eluabi, and Clark Johnson. Uh, you know, an international cast, but deep in Canadian, and a lot of a lot of Canadians in that cast. Um, what else can I say? Oh yes, let's talk about the. Let's talk about <laughs> yeah. the, the social nutrition checklist. Uh, okay, folks. As far as uh, uh, gender, would it earn a reframe stamp? No, it would not. Uh, is it union made? Yes, I believe every Canadian production union was <laughs> had its buck at the end. Um, did it pass the Bechdel test? As a matter of fact, it did. Oh, did I say a no? Oh, union made, yes. Bechdel test, yes. My bad. I'm so used to saying no most of the time, or at least half of the time. I dropped the ball there. Uh Last but certainly not least, is it class conscious? I don't believe it is, but Jim, I would love to know uh, if you if you agree with me or disagree with me on the class consciousness. Uh, not yeah, no, I I didn't really um, didn't unless they're you know different parts of the military, <laughs> you know, uh, in terms of class, but no, not not. I wouldn't yeah. say nothing that I noticed, uh, really. Um, however, I would say at at the number one, they had exactly one more char- uh, Aboriginal character than all of Harder They Fall. <laughs> with speed, with lines. You're, absolutely. Lines, a character name. He was yep. actually put in command once. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're yes. you're yeah. absolutely right. Um, like, yes. <laughs> Uh, another here's another noteworthy thing for those of you who don't know. Of course, it's set in Afghanistan when uh, Canada was participating in the international uh, uh, security force, uh, which I believe was from like they were there right like shortly after 9-11 as the Americans uh, led this force. Let's put some air quotes on lead. Um But they were there for what till twenty ten? I want to say, how long was Canada? The Canadians, I I think, was in the last few years only. Uh, Here, I'm going to find out when did Canada leave? Uh, There we go, Afghanistan, twenty fourteen. You're right. Oh, was it that long ago? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, still yeah. longer than I thought, but yeah. Uh, sort of long, much. <laughs> still, yeah. they stayed longer than I thought they did. Uh, but yeah, 2014 is when it formally, um, uh, formally withdrew its military. Uh, okay. Uh, an, uh, another noteworthy thing here, folks. So the, it was set. Uh, that that's where the film is set, and the basic gag uh, is it follows, as it says. Three stories really united by uh, Rusif. Rusif? Rossif. Rossif, thank you. Uh, Rossif Sutherland's character, Ryan, who is a warrant officer in charge of a small sniper force uh, who ties together Paul Gross's character, a uh, Captain Mitchell, who is an intelligence guy, a Canadian Armed Forces intelligence guy, and then, of course, the ghost. Uh, played by if uh, uh, Niamat Argandabi, I believe he's the one who played him, uh, who is uh, an Afghan former Mujahid- Mujahideen uh, fighter from when uh, from the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, and uh, it's how we, they're all tied together. Um, anything more, and we really are getting into spoiler uh, spoiler territory. And we're not in the spoiler zone yet. Another thing that's noteworthy is I knew and worked with, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, a good 
25% of the crew because a a, a fair chunk of it was shot here in Winnipeg and in Manitoba out at uh, uh, CFB Shiloh, uh, Canadian Forces Base uh, near Brandon, about two hours out of Winnipeg to three hours out of Winnipeg. Mm. Um, And uh, yeah, so I was fortunate enough when it was released, they did a special screening here in Winnipeg, and I was fortunate enough to go to that screening because I was working in the local uh, the local oh, cool. film office at the time when it was a special oh, nice. event. And uh, so, yeah, but that it was shot here, and you can, I sus- most of it would be wherever you're not seeing desert. Not saying mm. that there aren't dry parts, but most will be <laughs> in that kind of, uh, you know, where they can shoot in studio or where it looks like a base, but you're not seeing the mountain ranges. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that would be, that would be the, uh, uh, math, uh, Matt says, so is Winnipeg, like <laughs> Afghanistan. It's like, not at all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I would argue, especially with the, uh, the November 11th, the Remembrance Day snowstorm we got, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, okay. A lot of the scenes so, I think with Clark Johnson, I could a- actually, you could tell the vintage of the inside of the buildings when he's striding down the halls. I thought that looks like about mid century rural Manitoba institutional, uh, building. Well, it, <laughs> yeah. That's no, that's exactly right. And that's, that's definitely the Shiloh. Yeah. You know, yeah. in it, they go into those barracks or any of those old office buildings. They're all fifties or sometimes even forties, like built yeah. in world yeah. war two. Um, and you see in the thank you list and everything. Anyway, so there's, there's some of the local connection there. Uh, Jim, I think mm. that means, I think it's now time to do our quick review. Well, uh, start us off, man. Tell us what, uh, give us your, uh, give us your quick take. Sure. Uh, a little context first. Um, this, as Rob mentioned at the top, there's not a lot of, there are not a lot of Canadian war movies. Uh, I think even Australia, uh, a country of similar size has done uh, quite a bit more than we have. Um, so I think that, that, that a big part of that is having a, a Canadian, war movie set in contemporary times. Um, so that alone is kind of a novelty that I think for a Canadian is maybe a tricky, you know, it's like, whoa, what is this? It's like I'm watching the news, but it's not the news. Um, but uh, it, it, it was, I thought it was quite nicely filmed in a lot of ways. Some of the, the decisions with the cinematography, especially the start, I had to get used to. But um it was interesting. Um, it, it was pretty straightforward and, and there was a, a certain distance to it or there was something going on. And I think I figured out and I was going to run this by Rob, but I think what we were watching was almost a military procedural. It was half half story and half procedural, almost like the old cop, like a, an episode of Law and Order, just a military version or uh, if you're familiar with The Laughing Policeman with Walter Matthau back in the 70s, uh, you know, it's just very much this is how we do things, even up to and including Dragnet. Yes. Yeah. Or going to the bathroom <laughs> at your night post there, uh, you know, which was uh, sort of done mostly off screen, thank God. But, you know, uh, so so that was part of it. I read some of the reviews. They said, oh, it's emotionally a little bit uh, underwhelming. But I think that's probably because it was uh, uh, half a procedural and half a story. Uh, but I, I was I was pretty compelled to uh, watching it. I thought Paul Gross, um, I, I thought his character was quite interesting. Uh, sort of reminded me of the, the uh, insider in L.A. Confidential played by Kevin Spacey. Uh, and at, at, at uh, most of the time, uh, I was watching the movie and, 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 and expecting that sort of semi-silent sniper bullet in like every scene that was when they were dancing to Leaf Garrett. I'm like, here comes the sniper bullet. And when they're, you know, just doing everything, when they're drinking coffee, oh, someone's going to get shot. So that that was always uh, uh, something in the in the background. But um, I thought it was good. I thought yeah, it was no, they saved that. Yeah, it, yes. It did end up getting used, you yeah, know, but yeah. they did save it. Yeah. 
I thought it was good. I thought it was competent. I thought there were a couple of couple of things that were um, disappointingly sort of uh, derivative. Uh, we can talk about that later. But, uh, you know, it was a good movie. It was a good Canadian war movie. Uh, like I said, not overwhelmed. It won, won a bunch of Canadian screen awards. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was... It was yeah, <laughs> Schumer Simpson yeah. shrug there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it was well done enough, right? Um, but uh, I'd actually like to get into it and hear your opinion and, and the opinion of the chat there. Yeah. Uh, as well, uh, I wasn't overwhelmed by it, I, but I did enjoy watching it. Okay, <laughs> um, myself, I, it is a well-made movie. It is like it's solid. Uh, uh, it does hold your interest. I love that idea, Jim. You have there about the a military procedural. <laughs> um, although I'd say it's also very. It's the. It, it's trying to give you like an like uh like an embedded view of the world mm. you know you yeah. are you are given one opinion the Canadian Armed Forces opinion <laughs> and um and so you know uh, it's it's the soldier's story and we have seen a number of those come out uh both American and other other countries where they're like well, it's really hard to sell this as anything. Like if we talk about the real politics of the place, it's like, well, yeah, you know what? We'll just talk about the soldier story. Something we started to see with the Vietnam War movies when mm. they're having a, well, we don't want to criticize it, but we don't want to, you know what? We'll just stick to what the troops are experiencing day by day. And it, I think it did that very well. I think it was very well acted. I do, I did enjoy the, in in a sense, the intrigue component of it. And and there is, there is, it's how these three characters kind of connect. And there is, uh, and she uh, played by Christine Horn. There is a uh, uh, an important woman character and kind of a a B plot for Ryan, uh, the warrant officer, the head of the sniper team. Um, but I, I liked the intrigue. Uh, there was a couple of highlights uh, with uh, Christine Horn, that B plot. Uh, that said, it wasn't enough for me to overcome the, and I, I'm going to say propaganda, but I use that term advisedly. I don't want to, like, I, I don't want to lay that on too thick. I don't mean it's, like, popped right out of the machine, although they did. They got a ton of Canadian Armed Forces support, so that means a review of the script. Although Paul Gross, he's a base brat. He's always been a fan of the Canadian Armed Forces. Like, he, it's, it's, he's coming from an honest place. He wants to praise these guys, so I'm sure the 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 army did not have a hard time when they were reviewing the script and approving, you know, the use of logos and patches and all that stuff, um, the use of an armed forces base, etc. Uh, but yeah, there's this kind of kind of propaganda of we're here to support the troops. Um, the other thing that I think was, let's say, problematic. Uh, was the way uh, uh, Christine Horn and her character's name was, and I, where the heck did I? No, I have it somewhere embedded. embedded I will. Uh, uh, it's coming it, up. Jennifer Bowman. Thank you. Who's an officer? Um, she end up like I mean, what could have been a really interesting character. Uh, I think ended up kind of fitting in as the, well, look, we, we don't even, we have one video of one of the soldiers talking to his wife at home. Um, but we have the home front right here. Cause in the end, she ended up playing that role. Um, and don't want to spoil too much. You know, we'll get into that in a second, but, uh, I found that hard and yeah, I, I think some of the tropes that Jim, you're going to bring up later, I'm going to bring up ever, you know, all the, uh, there's like a, a, a couple, anyone working, any Afghani working for the, uh, 
for the Canadian Armed Forces was a good guy. <laughs> and then there's the noble warrior, uh, the ghost, um, the wolf of the desert, uh, you know, not the wolf of the desert, the ghost, something of the desert. Uh, no. He's got that noble, that noble warrior, almost savage going on. But otherwise, there's a lot of talk about if they can get it together here, it could be a nice country. Of uh, you know, the, if you know the, the medievalist, which I, I think it was just a. Probably the script it might have even yeah. been read these savages, <laughs> you know, like there's a real, um, and although the, the Mitchell character kind of tries to give a historic arc to the place at no time, like there's a moment and this is later in the film, but I don't, it's not a key plot spoiler, but where he, he literally in his narration, Paul Gross's character says, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alexander the Great was fighting an insurgency. And it's like, what the? F it's their goddamn place. <laughs> Alexander the Great was a fucking Greek who traveled yeah. across continents. He wasn't fighting an insurgency. He's the invader. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that's, uh, that's fundamentally why I'd say this is... An, and again, I use the word propaganda advisedly. It's still, it's a good movie. It's an entertaining, like a well done movie, but there's enough here that I'm like, oh, if, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, yeah, was it entertaining? Absolutely. But you've got to, there's a ton of, or, or, or at least a few key boxes. You got to kind of go, okay, this is not actually a sophisticated analysis of what's going on in Afghanistan or how Canada got into it. You know, because even that, the way they're presenting it is as though we were there morally. And I, I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that is not, Jim, the way I remember our... Uh, Mm. our entrance into Afghanistan. Uh, I, yeah. I, I got to admit, uh, as a Canadian, if I was prime minister then, um, I would have, if I was stuck being prime minister, I'd be like, yeah, we got to go. We, we can't not. They are our mm. key, you know, they are a key ally, our key trading partner. Um, it would be impossible not to participate, you know, um, and I would argue, I'm sure Kretchen would, the prime minister at the time, but I would argue one of the reasons we never got sucked into Iraq is because we participated in Afghanistan. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but yeah, to be there 14, that's 13 years we were there, not as long mm -hmm. as the, the Americans and how much, quote, blood and treasure they poured down that pit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, although kind of... Uh, well, I'll, I'll save the irony, the one entertaining irony, uh, which fits my politics to a T until we get into the spoiler zone. So anyway, that is, I went on way too much there. Sorry. No, uh, no. It is time for the spoiler zone. Uh, yeah, Jim, why don't we talk about the craft? They all die. No, I'm just kidding. That's my. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, my... it was a well-made... It was, it, I, I saw, I got to see it on a big screen Yeah, and it looked like a big screen movie. It mm -hmm. looks good here. Like, uh, yeah. it, yeah. uh, it's right up there with, oh, what's his, a CNN reporter, uh, wrote a story, uh, oh, you know what? I'll look it up, but I sure. thought it looked great. Everything worked. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was pretty slick and on a Canadian budget, you know. Yeah, what yeah. do you think? I, I think well, Jordan stood in for uh, Afghanistan at this point, um, and mm -hmm. uh, you know that orange sort of uh, orange rock against the blue sky, which is you, you're that's how it starts off. I mean, you're treated to this this uh, landscape, uh, yeah. and and you know I there's not a lot like that in Canada, uh, obviously. So I think immediately being a Canadian film and showing this sort of uh, almost an interplanetary landscape to us, 
I think that's a, that's a good place to start. But uh, yeah, I mean, they use the uh, they use the landscape to great effect. Um, even even when they're showing, you know, they have what they call the safe house, and it's this little tiny house, and it's surrounded by these ominous looking mountains. There's a couple of sort of long shots of it, and and you think ah, it doesn't look too safe, but a house by itself, <laughs> you know, and and there was other things too, like. Uh, uh, they said, "Oh yeah, we got to go out to to that place in the road where the the tree is, <laughs> the single tree, which is certainly not a a Canadian thing unless you're uh, up way up north." But uh, yeah, I thought it, the look of the film was well. Oh, some parts of Saskatchewan are pretty. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's true. But um, you know the the and the setup of the villages with the um, with the the. I guess they were growing grapes. So there's these sort of mud walls that they had to, uh, you know, uh, make their way through to various gates. Mm -hmm. And that, that was all a kind of a, a, a nifty setup in terms of a war movie. I, I hadn't really seen uh, something like that. So it was very, <clears throat> in terms of, uh, in, in terms of all the, all the things that they showed, it was very, uh, con you know, very timely almost. Uh, and, you know, again, I think, you know, unless you're watching something like Black Hawk Down, most of the war movies we do watch, I think, seem to be past wars, you know, uh, maybe last generation's wars or even in, even before that. So, again, th that's one of the, the sort of the, the the things about this movie that, that set it apart, I would say. But, yeah, no, it had a great look to it. Uh, they use color really well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it. it, it I mean, it, it was a fantastic looking photo uh, uh, film. I'm trying to think of, um, you know, sound and score. I didn't really take any notes on that in particular, which is kind of what they say some of the time. If you don't notice it, it's doing its job. But uh, uh, what did you they think? They did of, a lot uh, of that. The, the, the score I did note. And, um, you know, Jim, I it, it sounds, it's got what I would call Middle East or Arabic or Islamic kind of vibe to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, true, yeah. Although it looks like they hired a, like, a, like it was all composed. Like it was a woman mm -hmm. most of the time singing, but it's got that. And there's some dissonance in it. Um, mm -hmm. Myself. Um, I, I would argue as well done as it was. It's it's one of those. It's almost like a oh, how do we make sure people feel they're in an other place? Use this music, mm -hmm. use these yeah. dis, use the use the that gypsy music. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like use those use those music cues, but make it a little dissonant, a little you know, even a little more off. Hey, eh? uh, which mm -hmm. I remember I was fortunate enough to be in. Uh, Istanbul, and I was at the Blue Mosque area, and of course you got the Hagia Sophia, and then you got the Blue Mosque, and they're all part of one large complex. And the, the like, there was a call to prayer, and it was like a call and answer between each mosque. And still to to this date, uh one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had in my life. Like just being in that, being in the middle of that and hearing mm -hmm. that, uh, it was, it was, uh, stunning and beautiful. And I even got, you know, you can sometimes music can really push those emotional buttons. And I mm -hmm. got a little misty. Uh, whereas this, I think it was definitely designed to, again, embed you with the troops and make you feel uncomfortable. Um, and I, it was very effective at that. I'm not going to, not going to mm -hmm. lie, but uh, it also comes to uh, that. What's that word I'm looking for, Jim? Um, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> a whistle in my teeth is the best I can give you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, ooh. <laughs> like, like too much of a, like a little bit on the nose? Are you kind of thinking? No, or? more. No, I it, like, I, I like what you said earlier. Like, I was consciously looking for it mm. i think that's why i have a an elaborate opinion on the subject um yeah. but you're right it 
it does what it's supposed to do. But I think that's part of the problem is this whole idea that we're supposed to think of anything outside these five or six people as other, the, mm-hmm. the potential enemy. And it's like, I wasn't our yeah. country, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's true. like, you know, that, and that, that, that's a tough one, you know? Uh, but, but yeah, I, I would say as far as the craft goes, I thought it was all really like top tier. You know what? For, mm. I mean, it was okay. This was no, uh, peasant film. Um, you know, for a Canadian film, I think it had mm. upwards of $20 million Canadian dollars. Uh, but yeah. at the same time, you know what? It wasn't, uh, here, let me see if I can even find it. But at the same time, it's not the money uh, an American film would have gotten for this. You know, this is, and it looked good. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know, yeah. like I thought it looked, it felt pro. Yeah. Like, you know, something as far as Canadian filmmakers or the Canadian film industry, like I, I kind of shrugged because every year there's usually one real top tier Canadian production. So, of course, of course, this one would have gotten it for that year. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, anyone in the Canadian film industry can point at this and say, yeah, we can make a war movie. We're not, it's not something we can't do. Um, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's funny, too. I've seen all kinds of little uh, countries with their, well, the Dutch one, of course, and uh, Estonia has a, quite an interesting uh, we on... Uh, on canopy uh this canopy streaming service and you know i i, I guess over time you know you eventually <laughs> get out the, get those war movies out of your system or what have you or tell yeah. the story this that i haven't been told before yeah exactly. from your own country yeah. too so uh, not to be just it was nice to uh and i it was something vlad i think it said earlier in the chat it's chat's good chat's having a good time and so <laughs> Probably will not get to everyone, but Vlad said he wishes Paul Gross uh, would do a World War II movie. And I got, I got to admit, regardless of my feelings about this flick, I'm like, yeah, it would have been Forgotten Battle would have been a totally different experience if Paul yeah. Gross had done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, true. <laughs> and it's funny. Nowhere too, near as know, many British people involved. <laughs> I pulled up an article from the, the Legion magazine put out by the Canadian Legion. And they said, you know, I guess it was in time for November uh, for Remembrance Day some other year. And they say, here are seven films you should watch for uh, you know, for Canadian uh, Canadians at war content. Uh, of course, they had Passchendaele, also by Paul Gross, or with Paul Gross, uh, Hyena Road, of course, this one we're watching. And then one was a TV show called Bomb Girls. So they said, technically not a movie, but a television show. And then the rest were all like parts of English movies where they uh, basically gave a uh, Battle of Britain and the Devil's Brigade. And, and you know, so that, that shows you just, you know, how little, uh, and, and it might be a monetary thing or what have you. There's certainly been plays. There was a, a great radio play um, about 12 or 15 years ago, uh, years ago uh, that they ran every week on CBC called Afghanida. And I was, I was hooked. I don't normally like uh, radio plays, but this was a really good one. And it was just from the perspective of a Canadian unit uh, in, in Afghanistan. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyhow, so there's, there's, it's certainly uh, something that w- that we could exploit a lot more. I think. Yeah. No, I I, uh, I agree completely. Um, where was uh, there was another going back to the production values and their use of like uh, and, and just reminded Katie uh, Katie Katie Fowler welcome. <laughs> um, she had mentioned that when she was a cadet locally here, and this is a thing all uh, cadets did. Um, maybe still do. I don't know if they still do. Did it when I was, I never got the opportunity, but they did it when I was a cadet. Uh, but she went and slept in the bomb shelter that like the old fifties, I think it's a Diefen bunker in Shiloh. No, my God. Um, uh, yeah, awesome. she went and slept, uh, did a sleepover with, uh, some of her fellow cadets, uh, when she was in air cadets. Actually. Yeah. Katie, if you wouldn't mind, uh, 
chiming in if it was one of those defund bunkers, uh, we'd appreciate it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was that was where the provincial leadership was supposed to go back when we thought you know nuclear wars were fightable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. All right. What about the performances, Jen? What did you think of the performances? I thought, uh, once again, Paul Gross is pretty, he's a pretty charismatic guy. You know, it, it's uh, doing the silver fox thing. Uh, you know, he's gone, he's gone gray or white or whatever, and it totally suits him. I believed him. I believed his swagger and his years of experience and his, let me tell you a story and all that kind of uh, You I'm, bet. I'm not, yeah. sure if he, I'm not sure if he's a smoker, but I even believed him with cigarette in, a cigarette in his hand. Uh in terms of the other uh, characters, um, I, I, I'm glad the uh, the black guy wasn't the first to get it because <laughs> we are in the spoiler zone. Um, <laughs> Alan Hocko, a lot of these guys, for people who don't know or who, who are for, uh, like Matt from maybe uh, outside of Canada, a lot of these guys are like Canadian TV veterans. So Alan Hocko was uh, uh, one of the, the four snipers. He was um, uh, had his own show called Republic of Doyle for years, uh, but he's a big Newfoundlander and he's uh, he's often associated with uh, Newfoundland. Um, yeah, he was pretty good. He's toned down like like with a procedural. A lot of these performances, I thought, were pretty subdued. Um, they had the, 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 the ginger, the sort of the heavier set ginger soldier. He was. He was a little bit, uh, you know, mercurial. That uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, and uh, but I thought the the the, the um, one of the one out was the was the fixer, um, uh, the one that Paul Gross turned to uh, an, an Afghan guy. Uh, I believe was... that was was that that wasn't Haji Baba, but it was no, no, no. Uh, it was uh, Nabil Aluahabi. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. He played the fixer, the, the fixer. Yeah. And he was yeah. kind of, he was fun and, you know, he had, he had agency and he wasn't like a, uh, you know, he had his own thing going on. He wasn't, uh, he was a partner. Like he seemed to be an equal to, to Paul Gross to some extent. And, and I thought he had, there was a lot of verve and energy when, whenever he came on the screen. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, there was, there's some, some good, uh, some some good performances here, but like I said, pretty simple and a lot. Uh, he wasn't played. His English was excellent. He was yeah. aware and give the, uh, yeah, like his, his English was excellent. He was aware. He wasn't quite, uh, he was politically in tune. Um, you felt he gave you the idea that he's there for his own reasons, which is literally pointed out, but he, you felt that from his performance. No. Yeah. 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 And that was good in terms of the lead uh, who would be Ross of uh, Sutherland. Um, he was, he was okay. I think he was, he, he did a serviceable job. I, uh, I sort of expected somebody a little bit older in his, but in his position, but I'm an old guy mm. now. And, uh, and uh, yeah. these, these guys are pretty young. The, uh, I was watching, Oh, I'll cite uh, Vlad's, uh, latest film on the dam busters saying that the head of the operations was 26. Uh, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I mean, that might just be a me thing, but, uh, uh well, it's also, yeah. they're all joint task force too. You're not, yeah. that's not an old, that's not a 40 year old's game. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You know, but I, I, <laughs> so Ross of Sutherland, who, who is part of the Sutherland acting family, uh, half brother to Kiefer, um, he, uh, yeah, I, I thought he did an okay job. I, I, I wasn't overwhelmed, uh, by him. I think this was Paul Gross's movie. Um, but, uh, yeah, even his second billing or whatever he, he ended up getting. Now, do how about you? you think... What did you think of the performances? I, I thought they were all pretty solid. Um, I solid, mm -hmm. you know, that's about as best as I can give. Cause I think the, this is where. You know, it's, this is the opportunity to hook into story now. Like there was no one where I was like, wow, outstanding or boy, that's awful. Um, more what Paul Gross allowed them to do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, you know, 
Yeah, I, I do. I think that, and if if it's cool with you, I think that this is the sure. perfect time now to hook into uh, hook into story. And uh, yeah, for myself, Jim, I gotta say, um, kind of going on that, like there were the Chewy character, um, yes. played by Nikki Duval. Like that's there's a character where it's like, wow, you're. You know, it's almost um, like she's almost she's this trope, the the that chunky girl who can be flirted with by the boss and oh, I'll do whatever you want. You know, like the secretary in the secretary pool where the James Bond rolls through and goes, hey, can you do me a favor? I don't want to go through the procedures. You know, yeah, I'll remember yeah. you honest, you know. Of course, he's married with a woman at home, et cetera. You know, it's like, so I think that's, is that a performance issue or is that what Paul Gross wanted? And I would argue that's what Paul Gross wanted. Um, you know, she did fine in it. I think Paul Gross wanted his fixer to be more dynamic and, you know, good on him that he's giving him something to do in the scene. And is not mm -hmm. just, uh, oh, hey, Mr. Mitchell boss, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like one of yeah. those, one of those, uh, almost sidekick here. You know, I never felt he was a sidekick. I felt he was no, like no. an informant back to your procedural, um, mm -hmm. yeah. which I, I got to admit, like, I mean, if they'd come out with this five years before they could have turned Mitchell and what he was doing into a procedural. And I'm kind of surprised why they have it. They could have even, you know, they could still set it in Afghanistan, you know, mm -hmm. and just him as like a detective <laughs> or whatever. Right. Yeah. You know, you could have, you could have done that military procedural. Um, mm. But um, I, yeah, but as far as they go, like I think some of the characters were given more room um, or some of the players were given more room. Be, and so you got a better character. Um, and then some of the characters, even let's say the wolf character, uh, the indigenous guy uh, played by, pardon me. Oh my goodness. Come on. Uh, Akila, Ak Akalu, Akalu Mikas, uh, mm. Mr. Mikas. It, you know, it's it was almost like a, well, then he does the Mohawk thing and sort of, uh, you know, it's, oh, we got to have an indigenous character, but how do we make sure he looks it? And how yeah. do we make sure, you know, how do we make sure that everyone just by seeing him, oh, that's the native guy, uh, mm. uh, you know, without getting to know him, you know, it's like, well, that would take screen time and <laughs> we got other yeah, things exactly. to do, <laughs> you know, and calling him yeah. the wolf. You know, it's it, like, it's super, like it's, it's, you're flirting with a stereotype there. Right. Uh, although most, it was mm -hmm. really the Afghan people mm -hmm. who got the most stereotypes, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, uh, but as far as the story goes, it's solid. Like I said, I like your idea of the procedural. It's a solid story. Like you middle, you know, you, the acts, the act breaks work. Uh, rising tension. How is this all going to play out? Um, bit of a mush ending. It's like, oh, re really? Re you know what? They didn't mm -hmm. have, there was no air cover for this important thing that was going on. They didn't yeah. have any extraction plan other than just wander off. Uh, yes, you know, yeah. like, so it kind of had a lame ending. Um, you know, a lame to its that final too. ending. Pardon? That bothered me too. The the the, yeah. the 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 air cover was like, yeah, yeah. You know, they two, like. I mean, I bought it at the beginning. Right. Oh, excuse me. I bought it at the beginning, but not at the end. Not when it's such an important yeah. mission that they didn't have mm -hmm. like a nothing, <laughs> like nothing ready to yeah. extract anyone if it all went sideways. Um, I didn't. Yeah, again, going back to uh, Christine Horn's character, 
she does. It's, it's almost like she has a breakdown. Oh my goodness, the the father of my son. While well, he stoically, like every other war movie ever, I'll call in the mission on myself. I'll, you know, like the. It's like, yeah, what? <laughs> you know the. Uh, uh, even the part where they're arguing, uh, like what really kind of what triggers the third act, the whole where the BDK character, the the bad Afghan, <laughs> uh, takes these children. Yeah. And of course, this generic Taliban who are like just going to sell these children on the black market. And, you know, it's like it's just it's all designed. And I, I, I don't like it when it's designed that way that I'm like, well, of course, I'm going to hate that character because what they're doing is despicable. Uh, and I'm not saying that that mm-hmm. kind of horrible stuff doesn't happen in any war torn place. But I, yeah. I feel like I'm being manipulated into the point where, and even, you know, uh, and this is where Paul Gross at the end, you know, we all, we are going to make this place better. I don't know, Paul, yeah. Have you been watching the news of late? Like even in 2015, yeah. it, the writing was on the wall. The Taliban are coming back. The, the Americans will run out of the appetite to stay. And that was the longest war they've had to date. It went longer than Mm. Vietnam. Um, Yeah. Like nobody wins in Afghanistan. Like, because yeah, they're, that's not a country amenable to, well, I would argue no country's amenable to Western style nation building, especially though, Afghanistan to beat the Russians. What do you think Mm. we're going to be special? Um, Oh yeah. Yeah, so the, there's these things that I, I had a problem with. But but still, like, I mean, this is like a political, almost political quibbling. Um, I'm more getting into meaning now. Uh, it still was pretty straightforward, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I said, the ending was a bit lame. I, I don't like using that, like making the... Uh, making the villain so awful, they don't give the villain that BDK character or the Taliban any kind of context so we understand them. That little bit of sympathy, they're not complex. BDK is yeah. not a complex villain. He is in the end no. just a rich, a, a thuggish criminal, right? Like, uh, yeah. so, And without that, without that great villain, uh, how, how can your protagonist be all that heroic? You know, they're not really overcoming that yeah. big an obstacle. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, and, and the other thing, too, is the, the little fact that they slipped in is that uh, the ghost and BDK had history and mm-hmm. that uh, BDK was a soldier underneath the ghost. And when a Russian helicopter went down, and this is a quote, th- that he was found to have ass raped uh, one of the Russian uh, soldiers. Aspirated. So it's not enough. That what's that? Aspirated, I believe, was the word. Well, I think it was actually raped because I, I had the subtitles on. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so, what the subtitles say. I always thought it was aspirated, like just. Now, well, but, subtitles oh. aren't always uh, aren't always correct, right? Sometimes well, they are wrong. But but if, if you're if right, that, Jim, if yeah. that was the line, and I just misheard it, that makes the story worse. Because it does, it's just, he he becomes cartoonish. And again, that whole masculine ideal and then, oh, he's one of them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only does he kidnap children, but you know, (laughs) know, (laughs) have you heard the latest? Make it worse for you. He's, yeah, yeah. He's a That that was one of the things that I was, was sort of, uh, Mm. that, that, yeah, I, I, I think it was kind of unnecessary. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the story, the, the, the quibbling about it and what I thought was derivative was as soon as... So, the Jennifer character and Ryan, and I think she outranks him, right? That's uh, that's the feeling I got. I, warrant officer, I, I can't remember her. Is she a captain, I think? Uh, yeah, she right. was. Yeah, she was some... Yeah. So, okay, okay. warrant officer is... More junior to a captain, right? Anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. To explain that, what and here's the real problem there. 
uh, which could have made the story more interesting if they really explored it. But the problem there is not just the fraternization, it's the fraternization between officers and other ranks. Like all, mm -hmm. if you're not an officer, lieutenant and above, you're another rank. Now you may be a, a warrant, a warrant officer is a non-commissioned officer. So you got, you got private Lance Corporal, that's what I was back in the day, um, mm -hmm. uh, sergeant, I, I think there's a, there's a sergeant with an extra spin on it, but we can, Canada doesn't call him staff sergeant. And then you got warrant and then chief okay. warrant officer. So that's kind of the structure, but you'll notice all other ranks. So yeah, an officer sleeping with a, with an other rank, especially as a woman, you know, that becomes really, well, like it's just, Canadian Armed Forces is as disturbingly sexist as any other military, mm -hmm. perhaps more so, you know? Anyway, yeah. sorry, Jim, I interrupted. Yeah, Continue. so, no, 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 that was good. I, I just, I wanted to confirm that. But uh, and there's something else that I wanted to ask you about too. But as, so, so Jennifer and Ryan, the captain and the warrant officer, they've, they've got a thing going uh they're trying to do it on the down low on the base because that would be forbidden and if they got caught they'd both be in trouble but when they're on leave that's okay evidently so they hooked up in cyprus we're told then she becomes pregnant or she mm -hmm. she realizes on base uh that she's pregnant as soon as that happened i knew ryan was dead like there's no <laughs> way there's like someone's gonna die in this movie uh maybe everyone <laughs> maybe half the people maybe just the afghans i don't know but, but it, you know he's a goner <laughs> and as soon as they mentioned uh you know oh it looks yeah. like our future is bright you're done buddy i even wrote it down yeah baby equals he's dead and and uh <laughs> and um uh but uh so that and that's such a that's such a tropey typical it's such a sort of a storytelling equation kind of thing uh that it that it you know wasn't a surprise and and you know they started talking about i think get, you know marriage what they're going to do after you know, how they're going to yeah, handle plans. the the yeah yeah <laughs> it's like Life's every plan is yet another maybe. nail in his coffin Ooh, yep, tell us yep. about the kind of house you want to buy <laughs> yeah I, I, but, but there's a couple things that they didn't do they didn't draw out his death you know she talked to him one last time and, and he didn't say, oh, name him Lion or anything like that. Like, he, he, you know, he just, it was fairly straight. It wasn't milked. Uh, you can make, actually, you can make that argument for, for most of the movie, is that Paul yeah. Gross did show some restraint. Uh, yeah. it, those things typically weren't milked. And even, uh, uh, it was restrained as far as being Canadian. I think we saw people playing hockey three times. We saw Canadian flag. Well, there's Canadian flags on the, the shoulders. Tim Hortons referred to once, and yeah, we saw one once. Yeah, and uh, and a Canadian flag. But you know, in terms of the Neil Young, and and what did they choose? They chose Leaf Garrett as the sort of the recognizable song that the uh, you know the, the Afghans picked up on their transistor radio. So. So, you know, there was a bit of restraint when it came to this. It's just that that one sort of equation, going to be a dad equals I'm dead. That was sort of what I wasn't uh, too fond of. I thought it was kind of typical uh, anyway. Yeah. I um, Quick, uh, just a, I saw a bit of chat here, uh, Matt, uh, elaborating on where the salute came from. I will add to that. Uh, it's a bit of chivalry. Um and especially when uh, chivalric games, tournaments started to become a big deal. And you would raise your visor before you jousted. Oh. Not, you'd, still, you'd put it back down, but you'd raise it up. And it was that sign of, hey, I see you. And we're, it's that eye contact, that vulnerability, let's say, which was part of the, uh, part of the thing. Um, so anyway, there you go. I just wanted to add to that. Um, the um oh and one more thing um i joined the canadian armed forces because it would let me and my buddies drink underage 
ascribe no great moral. <laughs> oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, there's no, no virtue here. Um, and I was, I was dumb enough as an armored crewman. I took a lot of cool courses when I was in the Canadian Armed Forces, including combat intelligence, which gives you no cred in the private world. So. Do what, uh, well, the uh, guy we grew up with, uh, Jim and I grew up with, uh, Frank did. When he joined, he became a cook. And that he came out with papers. (laughs) He was a Red Seal chef at the end of it. Anyway. All right. Continuing (laughs) on, Jim. (laughs) What's for dinner? Spaghetti for 120. (laughs) Start eating. You know what? The man's taught me. You've ate at my table. A lot of what I've learned uh, cooking is from uh, Frank. Frank Jans. Uh, heck, yeah, you've yeah. eaten at his, great, what you've eaten uh, when oh, he's yeah, cooked yeah. at my place. <laughs> well, those great uh, Mennonite noodles, doesn't he do those? What are those? Oh, the Chilcha? Yeah. Yes. Damn, oh, that's good. Those are awesome. But, oh, uh, yeah. That's um, what I was going to ask you about, to... actually, uh, oh. it, there was one part that I didn't quite get. It was it was military jargon, and it was when that Chewy character was talking to Paul Gross, or Paul Gross was talking at that Chewy character, and he said something to her. Now, the Canadian military is actually rife with uh, sexual harassment. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. They're getting to the point where the people investigating the people are found to be harassers themselves. They're turfed out. Then the person that replaces him turns out that they're a harasser. They get turfed out. Like, it's just oh, yeah. it's just brutal. So when Paul Gross is talking to Chewie, he's asking her for a favor and thanking for it. And he said... I'm going to up, uh, open up a double O of uh, blah, blah, blah on your backside or, or something. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. It was what? sexual harassment, right? Just as gross okay. as it could be. <laughs> I didn't quite get what he was saying, but it was like. Uh, I didn't rewind is... it because I was like, do I need yeah. to? I know no. exactly. And, of course, it's presented because, of course, she has a crush on him because, of course, all yeah. women would. I, OK, maybe a lot of women would have a crush on Paul Gross. But, yes. <laughs> but you, you know, like that kind of it's like, wow, well, maybe they really don't know each other. But, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's funny to see it. Well, it was bad enough seeing it in the movie five years ago, six years ago. Uh, yeah. But now it'd be like, oh, well. There's the Canadian Armed Forces. There's there's leadership for you, which is why, like, again, Jim, I go back to the situation that the woman was involved in. Yeah, she does have to worry about her career. She does have to worry that she got knocked up, you know, Mm -hmm. like that is a thing you're not allowed to do. No male soldier, whatever. What do you mean? You're oh, oh, your wife's pregnant. Well, congratulations. Good to know you're a family man. <laughs> Try and keep yeah. screwing the other women on base to a minimum. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 I, I think, uh, I think that was like, instead, and again, like she, because she's, uh, you know, presented as a chunky woman and a junior ranks like that. There's no talk of her career. There's no talk, no sympathy for yeah. her maybe getting harassed or or at least getting toyed with by this leader, you know, this mm-hmm. senior and and not just a senior officer, but somebody in intelligence. So that's yes. that's a person who's going to become colonel later on, you know. Um mm-hmm. the um so that that's a classic in war movies, a classic trope. Another trope is and they brought it in is we there would be a woman and the the home story and the guy dying and the woman who has to bravely raise their child alone you know in mm-hmm. it, maybe not every war movie but in every fucking war movie you know this idea of the home front and they just bring her into the office like it wasn't when they could have really done something there was a great moment and it was a great plot point that just the direction they went into it. But when she's getting checked by another woman for her mm-hmm. pregnancy and she's saying, I'm asking you to keep your mouth shut where she's saying, I'm supposed to report this, <laughs> like, which is just disturbing on eight, eight levels. And yes, they all quote as a friend. Combat. Yeah. As a friend, because, because of course they quote combat readiness and it's like, 
the woman isn't going to be going out. Okay, let me, ooh, okay, yeah. just, I'm just going to get through this contraction, but we can finish this patrol. That's not happening. So it was just kind of like, it was, it was, yeah, that's a, it, it's almost like they just retooled an old, old war movie trope when mm-hmm. they could have used, like, I'm not saying that that's a bad trope, that that isn't part of the soldier's story of what's going on at home. Um, it could have been and American films have done this where they're talking to their mate, you know, their, their spouse over like over voice, like over video chat. And, but you're also hearing other issues like I can't make rent, you know, where it's, I, you know, like, I mean, where they're going through the very real struggles that these characters are, but you know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, again, it wasn't, but it wasn't a shit story though. It made sense for the most part. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, and I really do think we're more talking about meaning here anyway. Cause mm-hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's weird. A story trope. It's not just that it seems kind of lazy, but it's also, you know, there's also the meaning behind it. It's like, haven't we gotten past that? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the meaning is is sort of, and I was sort of wondering about this, if it's, you know, just specific to uh, Afghanistan itself, because that was sort of the, you know, Afghanistan stands like, not unlike any other place, you know, on Earth, and, and Paul Gross's character uh, cites various Alexander the Great stories, you know, there's at least a couple of them uh in in the movie um and then you know is it about war in general is it war in this particular area is it even just that you know um the uh the canadian experience hasn't been shown uh you know so what's to me i guess the meaning is found through the hook like what was the hook uh with this movie Uh, it could have been all of them you know well what's interesting is and i think this is it's it's both a bit of story weakness, but it bleeds so much into meaning. I, I, I did write it down. I just forgot to mention it until now. Um, and I do want to, I want to, I've got uh, Matt's uh, comment here pinned on the screen. We're going to get to it in a second, Matt. Uh, but what's interesting, what is the whole driving, the external driving factor of this film? It's this building this road, which was... Yes you know, a big chunk of what they were trying to do. If they could just build the road, then they could bring all these security and safety to these outlying areas. Uh, now, of yeah. course, uh, the the Taliban, I'm sorry, the insurgency, <laughs> the former government. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and let's use government advisedly. I'm not, pr- <laughs> they're no saints either. Uh, but that very idea of building a road and in the end, by the end of it, it's like that road's never getting built. Like a lot of these roads are just never getting built or they build them, they get blown up, they build them, they get blown up. It was just this, you know, and, and, and too easy war of attrition. But by the end of the film, you know, other than the general, like we don't really like, it's funny. The, The whole force effort is to build this road. And by the end of it, it's almost like the generals, like, ah, they ain't showing up and this is all bullshit. Let's go, yeah. you know, cause it is all kind of bullshit and mm-hmm. it's not getting better. Um, and I think they kind of miss that in Paul Gross stating. And I think that is the, the purposeful meaning, I think that was Paul Gross's meaning in this film, was that the Canadian participation in the uh, in in the uh, International Afghanistan Security Force, I think that's what it was called, uh, was a force for good and positive change in Afghanistan. And I'm not saying they never helped anyone, mm-hmm. um, but you know, just kind of stretched out more conflict and more drama. It's interesting. Even some of the characters, if they could just get it together, it's like, well, I don't think they're going to get anything together while the, (laughs) while the Taliban's able to say, let's get rid of the invaders. 
Like Wasn't we got rid of the last invaders. There's a crack about hosting the Olympics or something to that effect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, at some point in the future. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and at the same time, I wonder if there was a stealth uh, uh, meaning put in there. You know, he has to, he does have to run it by. Uh, you know, he probably have to run it by uh, the armed forces for approval or whatever. If he was getting all that, much well, he did have to, so, yeah, because he, so, yeah, he got so, their cooperation. <laughs> yeah, so you can't be too critical, but at the same time, there was that sexual harassment scene. Um, there was, which um, is played for a laugh. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, Jim. I I think it's legitimate to criticize him on all this stuff. Yeah, he yeah. like. Especially that, like at the end, it's coming out of literally coming out of his mouth. Words he wrote say, you know, it's that idea of like what what I would say it does do well is it does explore some of the nuance of a conflict in a space like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like even the way he's trying to like he's trying to say, don't shoot the guy. It's gonna you're denying the other the other guy, the death he wants um, mm -hmm. right at the end. But, you know, so points to s some level of subtlety from gross and from, from the story that we're being shown, but it's still a, I would call it a surface subtlety. Like again, mm -hmm. it, it comes down to the, the whole narrative about Alexander the Great factually correct but almost like missing the point again alexander yeah. the great was with like first you got the alexander the great was fighting an insurgency no he was an outside conqueror and they were fighting back that's not a fucking insurgency you know it's the americans mm. and their impression of vietnam we were fighting an insurgency no you weren't you were fighting freedom fighters, or maybe not freedom fighters, but the locals saying, yeah. don't remember inviting you here. Um, yes, the, yeah. um, there was the other, another point where, which has always been, and it's interesting, I remember it wasn't the Great Gardens, it was uh, Gardens of Stone, great American war flick. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great American war flick. Well, um, Khan, uh, senior Khan, Khan, uh, James Khan. James Khan. Yeah. He, yeah. They get all drunk at some point and he goes, oh, the Vietnamese, they're the most bellicose people. They've been fighting forever. Um, <laughs> just, and it's the same, that, that was a, a constant narrative during the Vietnam war. It was a, it was an, it's a narrative about Afghanistan and it's like, you, well, they've been fought over before. Many other countries have said, well, we want that. You know, whether it be the Russians, the British, the Greeks, <laughs> or the Macedonians, because yeah. I think the, the, the folks, the, the Aetians, the southern, you know, uh, in into the peninsulas of what is now Greece would not have thought of the uh, Alexander the Great as a Greek, uh, but yeah, these these guys, these uh, like it, it's not. It's just this is one area where it's it's actually relatively easy to fight back because it's mountainous or it's jungle or it's like it becomes pretty. Like it, it becomes uh, 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 possible to do that. Whereas, you know, there's other places where it's a lot harder to do that. It's easier to pacify an urban population, uh, you know, especially because they're playing by your rules. Like I said, if you've, if your big cell is, and I thought it was kind of cheesy when he said, they don't want our pornography, et cetera. It's like, I think they do want our standard of living, you know, yeah. but just on their own terms. You know, like it's I, I think that's I think Paul Gross would was trying to bring nuance from such a relatively narrow mindset. He doesn't allow for the simple fact that you're still meddling in a country that, you know, little about and who have experience kicking out outsiders from before. Yeah. And yeah. although and, and again, this. I would love to have seen this, Jim, a conversation about why Canada is actually there, it, it, yeah. which is missing. Yeah. The, it, it's all a very simplistic, well, we're making it better. If we're not the, the moment, the cheesy moment where it's, you know, if we can't defend children, 
what are we here for? Well, we're here because we kind of had to. Like, I would have loved for her to say, well, I know you think we're here to win hearts and minds, but we aren't. We're here because we have to be. Mm -hmm. Because we would be in a lot of trouble with our neighbor to the south. (laughs) You know, we're, I mean, I'm not saying that no Canadians didn't think it was a good idea anyway. I, again, if I was prime minister, I mean... Uh, it would be awful to make that decision because you're sending people to die. You're mm-hmm. sending people to kill other people. But I could understand why a Canadian prime minister would do it. Uh, but I would have loved to have seen that. Like just that kind of, I yeah. don't oh, know why we're really there. Sure, there's always, every time you put soldiers and flags and oh Canada, there's going to be some people, we got to support the troops. How are you supporting them exactly? Yeah, yeah. I Certainly mean, certainly not supporting the women in uniform because the leadership keeps harassing them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're certainly not supporting them. Like one of the, uh, you know, there's a uh, what's that word I'm looking for? There's that. Um, oh, Jim, I'm having a. Damn it! Throw some clues. There is that. Uh, it, the movie, in part, was a it supports a charity for wounded Afghan oh. uh, veterans. Yes, um, okay. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, myself, as much as I didn't think we should go there, should have gotten out earlier. But again, we didn't have to go to Iraq. So, but yeah, if if a veteran has been hurt by a foreign in in one of the things we sent them to we are a democracy not the best one yeah. but not the worst one either we sent them there including myself indirectly well then we should fucking do whatever it takes to make them whole again not yes. go well you know what we'll support this charity mm-hmm. fuck that that's fucking bullshit yeah. you know but this is this is this whole model so there's only one way to politically support the troops Make sure they have enough guns and ammo. Yeah. What? (laughs) You know, and I think there's that subtle, that subtly there in this film. There's also a little bit about, uh, you know, what they do uh, and sort of being uh, a little bit off kilter as you land. You you know, you don't have quite your Afghan legs yet. And and Paul Gross says, yeah, we get it right. We get it wrong half the time, but that means we get it right half the time, (laughs) which is very... A sort of defensive slash apologetic, uh, and, and it kind of interesting to have included it. I, I thought that was an uh, an interesting bit. Like we're trying, <laughs> you know, we're. <laughs> well, I'm a good and, guy, really. I mean, I might take out a couple shepherds, uh, you know, with my sniper rifle. But oops, you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that, kid. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't do a lot of that. They didn't do a lot of that. I was expecting that to like the accidental shooting of a young person or something. I, they didn't. They didn't do that. So. I missed that though, Jim. I, like I, I noted it, and I missed it. I was like, "Wow, these are the most effective soldiers we'll ever see. They never make a mistake. The yeah. only people they're shooting are guys with AK forty sevens. A lot of never a kid. Just as and." <clears throat> I do have a great deal of sympathy for that kid because a lot of them are fucking young, 20 yeah. years old or 25 years old for that matter. This, mm-hmm. the age of your children, you know, who are terrified and uh, forced to go in house to house, room to room for, you know, a mission. And then all of a sudden they just, they see the wrong thing and all of a sudden they, shoot the shit out of the whole house, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then it's like, wow, it's it just a happen. family at a birthday party. There was that chance. They're running through the alley and they, the kid sort of stares at him. He's got the, the ax and he's about to cut oh, he's the like, shoot him. off. And he said, shoot him. He goes, I don't shoot kids. So that was, yeah. you know, that was sort of, maybe that would have been the scene, but uh, yeah. Well, yeah. even that moment, like it's to emphasize that his, the, he has a moral code, but yes. children, yeah. you know, and it's like, I, you know, what he doesn't have obviously is a, a willingness to obey, obey, like he's the most insubordinate man in the Canadian Armed Forces. <laughs> and yes, you're supposed to, uh, you know, refuse an illegal order, although that even becomes really gray. Uh, but um, 
that, yeah, that this guy who's the most junior keeps telling people no and, you know, like giving a lot of pushback in combat situations. Even yeah, that, I was yeah. like, kind of, wow, you're really uh, laying a lot on these guys. Yeah, Although, who yeah. knows, the Joint Task Force 2 dudes, they may have... A, a lot attitude. of leeway. They may, when well, they may be even trained to give that kind of pushback because of the positions they're put into. But mm. I mean, I would like to have seen some nuance. Canada is Canada has committed war crimes in Afghanistan. It's just mm. we don't find out until about fucking years later. It's Somalia. like, oh, and it comes out in a report, and then it's like, yeah, you know what? Uh, apparently, that wasn't. Uh, for friendly fire or that wasn't and oh yeah you know what but it's it comes out so late there is no get oh and uh you know it, it's the military investigating itself mm-hmm. one of the reasons why they're now not going to investigate themselves on their you know because of their disturbing sexual harassment <laughs> you know <laughs> well it's but, worked out so well in the last few years uh... but yeah i i, I would have liked to have seen that that said to kind of at the same time, Jim, like I think its meaning is pretty clear. It wanted to celebrate Canadian soldiers to, mm-hmm. and I think this is something where I, you know, why did I pick it? Why did I pick the forgotten bottle? One of the things, the way we learn about our own history, including military history, is through film. And it's mm. like, wow, here's a movie that's actually about Canada and it's yes. about Canadians By in these Canadians. conflicts by Canadians and Mm -hmm. from, like you said, it, it didn't, if it was an American produced film, I'm sure it would have been a ton of hockey, like way more Mm -hmm. hockey than we saw. Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like the, it would have been really, you know, almost, well, not almost, it would have been offensive, you know, how much, you know, uh, Canadiana would have been jammed in there. Um, but at the same time, it was, you know, it, so it it did do that. And I think that's part of it. What is its meaning is mm-hmm. to kind of make a war movie, a cl- more of a classic war movie in a way, a Vietnam war movie, um, something, something even, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bruce, John Wayne, John Wayne would have been, yeah. oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Canadians yeah. can do a. Made a nice little war picture there, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think that was part of it. And so for Paul Gross, did he achieve? Well, kind of, you know, giving a little spoiler on what, what I'm going to say for Paul Gross later. But, sure. you know, yeah, sure. I think though. Now, but let's here. We got the chat's been going wild. We have not given them, <laughs> it's so wrapped up. Uh, here. Oh my goodness. And we've got Ahmed. Jelly Dog. Yes. <laughs> Jelly <Ooh>. Dog. <laughs> um, but uh where is it? Matt had said some what asked us a question. Oh my goodness. Thanks very much. I think we got uh, At least our chatters uh, already. Uh, our chat is active. I just oh, here we go. Okay. So Matt asks the question, I wonder what you guys think of men being seen as expendable in cases like hunting and war. Um, I couldn't really comment on the hunting, but the war part I could comment on. But uh, what do you what do you think, Jim? Expendable. Well, the expendability, because you've talked about this before when we're talking about folks behind. You know, I'm. Proxy Star Wars, fighters, or something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, I, I, uh, in these uh, kinds of movies, I mean, it, it's they've drilled into several characters, so expendable, not sure. I think that's more in the sort of the bigger scale things, and yeah, like with Star Wars, you come up with some sort of orcs in 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 the rings or something you have this army of people things humanoid figures that aren't quite human that you can sort of uh, roll through um expendable that might be uh more of a more of a class thing perhaps um you know where you think you think back to um some of the british uh british war movies and that sort of thing where they have 
where they have crap of uh, cannon fodder, basically. Uh, there was a really, there was a couple of really great uh, years ago, uh, Doctor Who episodes about uh, sending kids off to war. Uh, he had gone back to 1912 or something like that. And um, they, they were around Remembrance Day. And it was actually two very fine hours of uh, television drama, uh, television science fiction Remembrance Day drama, which I don't think there's a lot of crossover uh, in that part. Um, yeah, I mean, this one, it was such a sale. I, I don't know that anyone, you know, I don't think any of them were expendable. Well, maybe some of the the, the enemy. Uh, I, I'm sort of interested in is that often in these current day uh, war movies, it's not uh, victories that are highlighted. It, it, it's it's things like Black Hawk Down, which I which I mentioned before, which was the a disastrous raid in the 90s in Somalia. Um, this particular one, all four of our guys, all you know, all the whole unit, they get massacred. They get well massacre. They get killed in battle um and and that a heroic death a classically heroic death yes yeah uh, even to the point where they show the the building blow up multiple times and uh um and they're sort of given those wowee deaths like the the tank character he steps on a landmine and and you know they're getting sort of you know not quite uh, James Caan in The Godfather, spoiler alert, but, you know, it's kind of like digga, 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 you know, that kind of like uh, to, um, uh, Mifune in, in the, you know, the throne of blood or whatever with a hundred arrows in him, that, that kind of thing. So, uh, but, um, so that's kind of, to me, that's kind of interesting is that uh, filmmakers who are making modern war movies, unless I'm wrong and people can correct me, some of the the ones that I'm thinking of right now deal more with defeat or you know won the war but lost the battle kind of thing. So, uh, what do you think about that? I, you know, a... can you have a can you have one where you like maybe not? Yeah, what's the one where Andrew Garfield played the medic? That was the the mm. um, Heartbreak the, the Ridge. Conscien- yeah, conscientious objector. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean that of. Wasn't Heartbreak Ridge? I don't. Yes, yeah, so um, but, but I a think lot that was also a uh, with... that's also a Clint Eastwood early '90s movie. Oh, <laughs> super pro military type. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot I, of them deal with defeat, so it's kind of an interesting. I think for like for what what Matt's getting at. And we've always placed a premium on anyone willing to sacrifice for the group. Um, getting into how hunter-gatherer societies approached any kind of death, um, I think that comes to almost, uh, Matt, a, a conversation about the meaning of death and how, and this is like, there's a lot of good psychological research about putting a positive spin on anything bad happening. A kind of an optimistic worldview um, uh, is a good thing to have, even a little Pollyanna, you know. So if we make a big deal about sacrifice, um, it gives that person's life meaning to the group that's left behind. It also says to anyone who comes later, it's like, well, I'm risking my life and it could be, but there's a reason for it, you know, um, you know, it, uh, and it means that we'll all sacrifice for each other. I may not be the one who dies. It could be buddy or spouse or, 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 um, now there also seems to be, and again, that goes back to meaning, the meaning of death. And I think in a lot of ways, we all, we all believe in the just world hypothesis. Um, Mm -hmm. And even though it's patently not true, (laughs) um, we do believe it. And I think we need to believe it on some certain emotional level. But uh, 
whether it be soldiers or Jesus's sacrifice, the there it seems to be really burned in deeply into our, uh, let's say, certainly our cultural psychology, the idea of you, we live in a way in a weird zero-sum game, that you can get nothing, um, that there has to be some sacrifice, and that's like, you know, no pain, no gain. Uh, you know, it's it's wrought throughout, I think human culture, this idea that we've got to sacrifice or something. And so the whole idea, even though I think let's to get uh, biblical for a moment, I th- what's interesting is is that uh, I think Jesus, that let's say any of the scripture that seems to be like New Testament stuff that seem to be as closely related to what the historical figure of Jesus was probably peddling at the time, um, was very much about uh, like a, a, a payment-free grace that, uh, whereas I think a community in crisis, uh, especially when, because, you know, I suspect a lot of his immediate followers were like, he is the second coming. We are going to have immediate uh, relief from imperial pressure, uh, and when he dies, they have to explain that. They have to give his death meaning, and it can't be, you know, definitely not then. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, apparently, we were all wrong. Jesus wasn't the second coming, or he is, and he'll come later. But there had to be a sacrifice. And now what Jesus, the historical figure, was promising to us, we can now all have. And we can carry that promise forward, etc. So I think that goes just to the heart of the meaning of death and how we need to give it meaning to make it, to make our lives make sense, whether it's factually accurate or not. That's a lot. What do you think, Jim? (laughs) Uh, I covered quite a bit of well, ground back, there. <laughs> I like to quote Ephesians three sixteen. No, I don't know. Um, the um, <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm with you in the chat. They're actually uh, they're getting pretty deep as well. Uh, yeah. If you checking well, that out, it's all that Matt's fault. That Matt guy, he's a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's uh okay. It's 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 going on. But uh yeah, I mean you could take that fairly deeply. I mean uh in relation uh I you know, and I wonder if Matt was referring to this movie specifically, but uh or just I think sort he was of kind of general. more in the larger yeah. Metaphor. They were they were talking about the hero's journey a ways back. Like I caught a bit of that <laughs> as we were talking. So, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's a lot to get over. I, I should actually add another thing too that's mm-hmm. come up along with sexual harassment. Uh, another aspect of it that I was thinking about is that, um, and again, for those of uh, us who are maybe in the states or Australia or elsewhere, uh, the Middle East, is that. Um, uh, Canada's been sort of dragging its feet, uh, uh, or it had been for most of the year, uh, bringing in the translators and the helpers, the, the guys who actually yeah. helped us. Uh, <laughs> they've been actually dragging their feet on getting them into Canada, saving yeah. their lives and uh, having them uh, be, be part Coming of... Coming through uh, on the promises we made. Exactly, exactly. A fucking and, decade and, ago. You know, we'll get to it. Do you have your paperwork rolled out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's... I'm, it, I don't it's mean cra- to laugh at that awful, that shit deal we handed out as a country, yes, yeah. but it's darkly comic paperwork for fuck's sakes. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah. Jim, and they're, they're, yeah. they're, well, they're bureaucratic bureaucratizing they're bureaucratizing the whole uh, process uh and and they're often being quite arbitrary to the point where uh and i can't i may be conflating the 
American experience and the, and, and the Canadian experience, but where the soldiers fought with these guys that helped them out are trying to help them now get into the country that they assisted, yeah. um, which put their lives in peril. Um, it, we're just saying, well, we need that form in triplicate or whatever, you know, and it's, and, and sometimes you'll send, uh, I've read accounts of them sending in a uh, couple hundred or getting pages lost. of documents. Getting, yeah, getting lost or saying, no, we found a mistake and not listing what the mistake is or, or, yeah, yeah. or, or just something so um, uh, Kafka-esque or just you know, basically disappointing, I, I, well, I, I think. Is that just, oh, it's, you know, it's something we clear the red country, tape, let these folk yeah. in. But but let's let us not be shocked at this kind of lame no. not following through on a deal. Like here we reside on Treaty One land, Jim. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> which <laughs> our governments since the first deal have done our damnedest not to follow through on <laughs> to forever kind of well the circumstances and you know. Mm-hmm. Why should we worry about those children? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, how dare well, you expect you know, us other... to actually dig these kids up? <laughs> I and I and I have people in my own family that will that that have said, oh, I, I, but it doesn't matter." And I just I just about got into it uh, this summer with with somebody. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? They they basically they all they sacrificed a great deal to help us out we promised them certain yeah. uh, uh certain things and uh we're not coming through on them i guess the i guess the basis of that is that we may uh allow somebody who who you know one or two people who oh. didn't do what they said yeah. in but in the meantime you're keeping all these people out and and their lives are in danger for helping us oh. uh with well, the current not just their lives their families, like there's Their just families, there's a knock on yeah. effect. Now here is the, and I think Paul Gross did a, a pretty good job. And this I totally buy. That, um, like how important that interpreter would be to a, a to any unit that they were employed by, you know, uh, like just the the way they protected the 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 interpreter they had a character name i can't remember um uh and i think we see that both in the united states and in canada how like a lot of these soldiers uh whether they be other ranks or officers are going what well, the guy helped save our lives we, why aren't we following through why aren't we following through on the promise i made to him because you told me i could make that promise to him you know mm. he saved us he supported us. you know whatever we got to get him out and yeah i do feel that but that said uh i think we're now going past the meaning of the movie Oh, and of almost, course, yeah. Absolutely. You know, almost into uh, uh, another, uh, but which I think that means, Jim, it is time. It's that time, Jim. It is that time. Let's uh, let's 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 talk about, yep. you know, everybody. How about a like? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't already, please subscribe. Oh, excuse me, terrible belch. Last but certainly not least. Please ring that bell. <laughs> um, I bet you Vlad that, uh, doesn't have a bell. <laughs> no, just, just kidding. Just kidding. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's got subscribers and watch hours. Vlad's fine. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a poppy, lest we forget. We do. Uh, uh, beautiful. And actually, you know what? Uh, not that I'm big on glorifying war or uh, glorifying that sacrifice. Uh, I will say, yeah, the Paul, uh, it's Paul McRae, right? No, the last time, last name was McRae. The, uh, the officer. John, wrote, John McRae. John McRae, thank you. And then tragically died, like, you know, like some of these poor buggers, like months from, from mm-hmm. Armistice Day. Um, 
yeah. Guy who wrote the poem really kind of, I think, uh, World War I had some great war art, some great war poetry, great war novels after it that I thought really did kind of capture the futility uh, in no way did it, at no time did you feel like it's like, ah, oh, this is totally making it glorious. You know, I think they, a lot of those folks during the war and after came home with a, uh, able to capture just how horrific it is an experience, right? Uh, how it mm. breaks body and soul. And uh, yeah, I think, it, which kind of going back to this film, maybe one of its failures, but talk about that in final thoughts um what else do we have to talk about well you know what i know what we have to do we've got to give jim the screen because we've got to talk about what we're watching next week oh yes yeah absolutely sorry uh we're <laughs> a little bit of change of tone uh, um, <laughs> we are going to see at the movie theater and we have to talk about schedules but we are going to see ghostbusters colon afterlife I think there's a colon in there, but anyhow, the new one, uh, which should be arriving in yes. theaters uh, Thursday. So yeah, yes. yeah. So that's um, featuring the sexiest man in the world, Paul Rudd. <laughs> gonna figure out if it's all about hair or not. I don't know. That's right. I think uh, I think is uh, getting super cut. Oh my goodness, we got somebody leaving. Oh. Oh, he, he had to fly 90 minutes in. He's gone. I, I angered him with the bell comment, I think. <laughs> just... may, have may have been, may have been. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, next week we are going to be watching. It does come out Thursday here in Canada and pretty much everywhere else. Uh, looking forward, uh, Jim, to, of course, Jim and I, if we get the chance, if we can, we'll go check it out together. And... Um, uh, be able, maybe give you another parking lot review, parking yep. lot reaction, uh, before we get into the deep dive. Sounds good. Uh, on that note, uh, yeah, Jim, why don't, uh, what do you, what do you, where's your take on, uh, Paul Gross's efforts here? What, uh, you giving him a pass or a fail? Well, you know, uh, Pulled off a decent looking Canadian war movie, contemporary set in contemporary times. Not a lot of folks are stepping up to do that. I can't imagine the headaches that that uh, he went through to, to get this done. I would give him a qualified pass. Uh, you know, maybe you know, maybe the the subject isn't so so deeply attacked or maybe it could have been handled in, in, in another way or uh, what have you, but uh, yeah, I'll give him a, I'll give him a pass on, on this one, a qualified pass on this one. Yeah. It was competent. I'm, it was a, yeah. a workman like competent <laughs> movie. I'm, I'm stuck on this one, Jim. I'm actually, I'm going to give him a weird kind of pass. Notwithstanding my feelings about the film itself. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do think he accomplished exactly what he set out to accomplish, which was a movie. Uh -huh. And when I say celebrating, I don't mean like, well, maybe a bit of a John Wayne-ish, but not as bad. Not as, I don't think, I don't think he's a cruel man. It's like, well, we got to, I don't think he's celebrating Canada's involvement in it as much as he wanted to focus on Hey, Canada was there. We had, and, and Canada was there, and our soldiers were heroic. And I think he achieved that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will. It'd be interesting to interview him now and kind of go. So now, knowing what you know, not just about the conflict itself, but about how awful it is to be a woman in the Canadian Armed Forces. Would you have rewritten some of these scenes differently? You know, um, it, it would be interesting because, yeah, I yeah. think is is uh, the 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 gender politics were just, I think, a little lazy, um, uh, but are like especially looking at them now, it's like, ooh, that's 
a little ugly. Uh, so Probably not, give... not unrealistic, though. Hmm? Sorry no, to interrupt. I'm, uh, actually, I, oh, the harassment realistic. The Again, there was a potential with the captain. God damn it. Ms. Horn's role. No, <laughs> I think there was Jennifer. an opportunity to really kind of explore that. And he didn't. Um, mm. He and, and he, I don't think he presents it, but I don't think he's presenting it critically. Like even mm. when they get together and yeah. it looks like the whole base knows that those two are getting it on. And what does he say? And it's met. He delivers. His character says, oh, uh-huh. um, congratulations yeah. on behalf of the whole company. You know, like, so it, it is. She's been objectified by all. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's a nod and he laughs. And it's just a, it's a great guy moment. Again, yeah. I think um, it, it, to interview him now, I suspect well, it'd be interesting to, you know, might be worth worth a little tick, 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 kind of go, what yeah. has he said about it? Because, yeah, that's, they're playing it as though that, that the harassment is all in jest or it's all about true love. And as we've learned, it's mostly, it's like, it's the junior officer laughing because she has, you know, well, she obviously is presented as, well, of course, this chunky girl would just love it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Cla- and that's classically how those things play out, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that's the way they're presented, right, you know? So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyway, um, what... Uh, oh, um, wow, we'll have to come back, Jim, and just go through all the comments. <laughs> it was hot, yeah. hot. Comments are hopping. Over hopping. 100. Matt's, uh, Matt's bringing his A game and everyone is getting in there, uh, getting their comments. Uh, but uh, He's got his Monday anyway, morning um, coffee. It's springtime though over there. So you see. Uh, that's all, true. Yeah. Spring and. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, is Perth anywhere near? I will come back to that. I'll have to do some research sure. and then I'll ask the question. Um, Jim. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, another group that's being overlooked are the the Afghan LGBTQ community that also need uh, uh, airlifting out of there. But anyway, final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It nice. wouldn't be coming from the people who made this movie. Yeah. Remember, yeah. ass rapist. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and that's something I, I'll go back and look over, but I'm pretty sure that that's what it said on the subtitles. And sometimes, the you know, you and listen and then you can because there are mistakes i say that as a transcriber editor uh but um yeah i mean it was competent uh, there were issues uh what this probably means is there needs to be uh more of these kinds of movies for canadians you know uh to for i think to get it right uh you know uh throughout not just the visuals not just the competent delivery uh, but to yep. actually have a, a well-rounded uh, Canadian with the nuance, movie. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Plenty I, of stories out there. That's a that's a great that's a great comment. And unlike the American Western, which I'm not sure is redeemable, <laughs> I think war movies can be can be great on all levels. Um, yeah. They can, they don't have to just celebrate the act, you know, they can, they can use it as a means to explore that horror, uh, as a means to explore why that conflict started at all. Uh, there are, I, I think if we ever did Schindler's list, Jim, I could still kind of break it down, but in the end, at least it was, you know what? There's something to be said for celebrating a, even a jerk like Oscar Schindler, a womanizing jerk like Oscar Schindler, as for stepping up when most of humanity was not stepping up, you know? Um, So I I think there is something you can draw some social good out of a, out of a great war movie. Uh, This isn't that one, but it was pretty good. I'm not sure I could, I'm having a tough one. It's kind of like 
the uh, it's like the last movie we watched. Uh, um, oh, last the harder week. they fall. Where yes, I'm like, the harder they fall, yeah. you know, it's that, you know, that breath through the teeth thing where I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. I uh, Matt, I will ask you. I just I can't even. I got to do the research to ask the right question. <laughs> Because I'm like, I want to know this thing about this guy, you know, in that movie from YouTube, <laughs> which says nothing. <laughs> no, okay. Um, he was about Perth, though, or hmm? he was about Perth? Um, it, I think it is. <laughs> or something <laughs> close to Perth. I, you know, yes. anyway. Um, I think think jim i think yeah you know what we could be here like the chat is just so deep so awesome of course half mm. the people that were participating in the chat aren't here uh but um i think um yeah we could be here for another couple of hours but uh i do think though given uh the that's a bigger mission than we really have space to take on so <clears throat> I think it's just time to sort of wrap it up, eh? What do you oh, yeah, uh, What yeah. do you think? Yeah, no, sounds good. Sounds good. I need to um, well, get a drink. First and, of all, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm parched myself. Um, let's some, uh, some first uh, water anyway. Matt, thank you, our man in uh, Perth. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have a great day. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, Ooh, Syriana. That was that was an interesting flick. Uh, oh, the Green Zone yes. would be another uh, interesting flick. Um, I, yeah, I haven't seen that one, but I've seen Syriana. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, where are we? Matt. Yes, Matt. We've got Matt. We have Ahmed, Jelly Duck. Good to see you here, Matt. Thanks for coming by. Of course, Vlad, Walt. Uh, thank you, Vlad65, for, for popping in. And thanks for doing the review of uh, the Dam Busters. You know that movie with the bombers, <laughs> which I remember Jim from seeing on CKND on Sunday afternoons. Oh yes, Back yeah. The they used to be crazy yeah. about war, mo late movies, and yeah. two movies on Sundays, and World at War, and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> yes, Richard, you are right. Yeah. Yeah. That whole sacrifice. Well, it, it, I, you know, man, Jesus, just, I could go on for another hour on this stuff. Uh, but Richard, Richard L and Katie Fowler, thank you both very much for popping in and coming yes. by. And am I missing anyone? I don't, well, there's Ahmed. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I think out. I got everyone in the chat. Um, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and if I missed you, uh, shout out now or it's, uh, too, uh, it is too late. Yes. Paul Greengrass, you are correct. Um, anyway, Mr. Chiboyko. Yes. Everyone in the chat. Thank you all very much. Uh, join us next Sunday. Um, at uh, next Sunday here, here, here on the YouTubes um, and maybe on Facebook. I tried an experiment tonight. It doesn't look like it worked out at all. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, restream and even Facebook. Uh, but thank you all very much for joining us. Come back next week, yeah. 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, UTC minus six. And we'll back back here to do a deep dive on uh, on Ghostbusters Afterlife. And uh, if Jim and I can coordinate ourselves. Good, 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 good ghosts. <laughs> we will check out this flick on our, uh, very much on our, uh, uh, in, in theater and give you a uh, parking lot, uh, another parking lot reaction. That seemed to be pretty popular, eh, Jim? Like, we yeah, got, uh, yeah. we got a, we got a number of views uh, from uh, our Dune one. So we'll see how this plays out. Alrighty. Go. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's about it. I think it's time to, uh, cue, let us, uh, let us cue the outro if I can find it. See there we are.